During a Flight 10 webcast, SpaceX spokesman Dan Hewitt commented on landing Starship on Mars, saying, They're just going to put minimally viable landers on the surface, land right on the skirt, no landing legs. That sparked a question for me. If Starship can land on Mars without landing legs, could the same approach work for the Moon? The current plan for landing humans on the Moon involves equipping Starship with landing legs, mainly due to the Moon's uneven terrain. However, this approach runs into a familiar challenge, the same reason SpaceX is now catching Starship with a giant launch tower on Earth. Wait. Starship is significantly larger and heavier than Falcon 9, so it would require much bigger and stronger landing legs. Estimates suggest that at least six legs would be needed to properly support the vehicle, adding considerable mass. On Falcon 9, the landing legs are made from carbon fiber with an aluminum honeycomb core, a strong, lightweight combination that absorbs impact and enables reusability. Carbon fiber isn't cheap, but the investment makes sense when the legs are reused. In contrast, Starship HLS isn't expected to return to Earth. It lacks heat shields and flaps, and is designed for one-way missions on the lunar surface. That makes expensive, non-reusable landing legs a questionable trade-off. So, can we realistically land Starship on the moon without huge landing legs? At least, not in an upright position. You might recall the robotic lander Odysseus. Back in 2024, it became the first American-built spacecraft to touch down on the moon in more than 50 years. It toppled over at an angle. That limited how much science it could do on the lunar surface, because its antennas and solar panels weren't pointed in the right directions. Intuitive Machines tried again the next year with another lander, Athena, but it also failed and landed sideways. It couldn't get enough sunlight on its solar panels and ended its mission early. Turns out, landers flipping or rolling on the moon isn't that rare. It is really that difficult to land upright there. When it comes to landing on the moon, many of the problems faced by intuitive machines landers could apply to SpaceX's Starship, too. Online and elsewhere, people pointed out the height of the Odysseus lander, 14 feet, about 4.3 meters, from the bottom of the landing legs to the top of the solar arrays as a contributing factor in its unsteady touchdown. Something tall falls over more easily than something short and squat, and on the moon, where gravity is only about one-sixth that of Earth's, the tendency to tip over becomes even greater. This isn't a new realization. A half-century ago, Apollo astronauts experienced this firsthand as they hopped around on the moon and sometimes fell over. Lunar gravity isn't very forgiving. The sideways motion that can tip a lander of that size only needs to be a few meters per second. And you can say the same thing about the more than 50-meter tall Starship HLS. While SpaceX says Starship's center of mass is actually quite low, all the heavy parts like fuel tanks and engines are at the bottom, many people still worry the ship is simply too tall. Looking at the physics of why it's harder to stay upright on the moon, there are really two parts to the question of stability. The first is static stability. If a spacecraft is tilted too far and its center of gravity moves outside its landing legs, it will fall over. Interestingly, the maximum tilt angle before falling is the same on the moon as it is on Earth. That's because gravity cancels out in the equation. It would be the same on any world, large or small. But that changes if the spacecraft is still moving. Odysseus was supposed to land vertically with zero horizontal speed, but due to issues with its navigation system, it was still drifting sideways when it touched down. If the spacecraft stays intact, it rotates around the first point of contact, where a landing foot touches the surface. Calculations showed that for a lander like Odysseus, the landing legs would need to be about two and a half times wider on the moon than on Earth to resist the same amount of sideways motion. So if a six-foot, 1.8-meter wide stance is enough on Earth, you'd need legs spread 15 feet, 4.6 meters apart on the moon to prevent tipping at the same speed. Now imagine what that would mean for Starship. Those legs would have to be enormous. So on the moon, you have to design to keep the sideways velocity very low at touchdown much lower than if you are landing the same vehicle in Earth's gravity. One of the reasons both the IM landers and Starship are so tall comes down to the tanks that hold their liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants. Methane weighs about twice as much as oxygen, so if the tanks were placed side by side, the lander would be unbalanced. Instead, the tanks are stacked vertically, 
That made the whole vehicle taller. In the case of Odysseus, things got worse when its laser altimeters failed during descent. Without accurate altitude readings, it landed faster than planned, on a 12-degree slope, which exceeded its design limits. It skidded, broke one of its six legs, and tipped over. So now you know. It's genuinely hard to land a spacecraft upright on the moon. Far from removing landing legs, Starship might actually need a huge, wide set of them. But there are other ideas floating around. One interesting suggestion, what if we didn't try to land Starship vertically at all? What if we landed it horizontally on the moon instead? Is that possible? The idea of landing a lunar spacecraft, such as Starship, horizontally rather than vertically presents an intriguing set of trade-offs. Since the landing engines in Starship's human landing system variant are already positioned partway up the body, a horizontal orientation could theoretically enable a design where landing legs extend perpendicularly from the side. This would result in the vehicle resting on its side, with the nose and engine bays pointing toward their respective horizons. While this may sound unconventional, especially for a system designed for vertical operations, it's worth exploring the potential advantages and challenges of this configuration. A major benefit of a horizontal landing is increased ground stability. With a lower center of gravity and a wider footprint, the spacecraft would be more tolerant of uneven terrain. This could reduce the risk of tipping, a known concern for tall, narrow landers on sloped or rough lunar surfaces. Access to the interior would also be significantly improved. Instead of relying on long elevators or hoists, astronauts and robots could enter the vehicle directly at ground level. This could be especially beneficial when converting the fuel tanks and internal compartments into habitable areas or using them for long-term storage. The closer proximity to the lunar surface would also make it easier to offload cargo, particularly for missions involving surface mobility systems or large payloads. Another speculative benefit is that the main engines, since they are pointing laterally, could be ignited sooner after liftoff without the risk of blasting the lunar surface directly beneath them. Additionally, if the vehicle is to be covered with regolith for radiation shielding, as some proposals of turning Starship into a lunar base for longer lunar stays, the horizontal orientation would facilitate burying parts of the structure more easily. Despite these potential benefits, the structural challenges of a horizontal landing are significant. Spacecraft like Starship are optimized for vertical flight and landing, relying on the axial strength of their cylindrical structure. Turning it on its side would introduce bending stresses it was not designed to handle. While Starship is already subjected to horizontal loads during Earth re-entry, those loads are aerodynamic and distributed. Lunar landing would concentrate forces at specific landing leg points, creating high local stresses and risking structural deformation, especially under the load of a 50-meter steel structure, even in one-sixth gravity. Another major issue is internal orientation and design complexity. A spacecraft designed to operate both vertically for launch and horizontally for landing and habitation must handle load-bearing in two orientations. This increases the complexity of structural reinforcements and the internal layout. Unlike re-entry belly flops, which are temporary and don't require interior access, a horizontal lander must maintain full structural integrity while being inhabited and potentially supporting external loads like regolith covering or equipment docking. Additionally, using the main engines for either landing or takeoff becomes problematic in this orientation. If the vehicle lands horizontally, it likely cannot use its main engines for a vertical ascent, requiring alternative propulsion systems or a method to reorient the vehicle before departure. This adds complexity, weight, and risk. Fuel slosh is also a concern. With horizontal tanks, lateral movement of residual fuel can shift the center of gravity significantly, making the vehicle unstable during initial takeoff or lander relocation maneuvers. In a vertical configuration, slosh effects are easier to manage because gravity acts along the same axis as the tank's length, helping maintain balance. While landing a lunar starship horizontally could offer some practical advantages in terms of stability, access, and future habitation potential, the structural penalties and operational risks are substantial. The only truly compelling benefit might be easier cargo unloading, but even this can be mitigated through mechanical lifts or surface infrastructure without re-engineering the entire vehicle. Now, if you really don't want to add legs to Starship, one obvious option is to build something like Mechazilla on the moon. Elon Musk once posted that landing legs are only needed for the moon and Mars until there's local infrastructure. 
So building launch towers on those worlds has always been part of his long-term vision. But honestly, either option would take a lot of time. A horizontal landing on the moon would require extensive research and development. And as for building towers on the moon, we're still in the very early stages of lunar infrastructure. Right now, most of the active work is focused on foundational systems like power generation and communications, not full-scale habitats or mechanical towers. Even though robotic assembly and 3D printing technologies are being tested, large-scale construction is still years away. And I don't think SpaceX has that kind of time. NASA's Artemis program is moving forward, with Artemis 3, its first crewed lunar landing, targeted for 2027. That mission is slated to use a version of Starship as the human landing system. So, unless timelines slip significantly, SpaceX will need a reliable, proven solution soon, not years from now. In the end, the moon is a harsh place to land a spacecraft, especially one as massive and vertically stretched as Starship. While creative solutions like horizontal landings or lunar-scale mechazillas may one day be possible, they remain far off on the technological horizon. For now, if SpaceX wants to get humans safely to the lunar surface and back, it may have no choice but to compromise, adding large, heavy landing legs, even if they're used only once. Because as much as SpaceX thrives on pushing boundaries, when it comes to the moon, stability might matter more than elegance.